On this, I guess, month's episode of why DT is wrong, I need to talk about the word processor video. So, the TLDR of this is basically that word processors are bad. They are so bad, in fact, that they are actually evil, and you should instead just use plain text for all of the documents you want to make. Now, I can fully understand this argument from a personal level. I mainly use Markdown for the stuff that I write. DT said that he mainly uses Org Mode perfectly fine. But the arguments he made for why other people should do so, many of them are fundamentally flawed, and some are just flat out misinformation. One thing I do want to say is I don't think DT is trying to mislead people. DT seems to have this habit where he makes videos that he doesn't exactly research what he's trying to say, and that leads to a lot of things he says being... I guess wrong. I make the same mistake, I'm not saying I'm immune from it, I'm just trying to set the stage. His first argument went, when you use a word processor, it's very easy to get distracted because rather than just focusing on writing the document, you're going to worry about things like typesetting and fonts and images and tables and all of that extra stuff that just makes the document look nice. Whereas when you write in plain text in a text editor, you're just focusing on the text, and then if you need to format it like, say, a research paper, you can go back afterwards and then format it with something like, say, LaTeX. I don't think this is a problem with word processors whatsoever. This is 100% a problem with DT being easily distracted. I absolutely suffer from the same thing. That's why when I'm like planning out a video, I have to force myself not to look at YouTube because if I do, I'm going to stop working and focus on that for a while. But the problem of formatting doesn't just exist only in a word processor. So if you're writing a document in, let's say, LibreOffice Writer, you can write that entire document in the default font and then at the end, go and format everything. Likewise, if you're doing something in plain text and you want the document to be formatted in LaTeX while you're actually writing it, sure, you can just write the document, but you can also format it in LaTeX as you're actually writing. It entirely depends on your writing workflow, and some people can absolutely make their workflow more efficient. My favorite argument in the entire video is that plain text is always going to be plain text. In a hundred years, it'll be the exact same thing, and you never have to worry about compatibility issues. This is very, very wrong. Now, plain text is a weird sort of idea. So plain text is more of a concept than a standard. It's not wrong to say that the idea of writing out text that isn't formatted is always going to be the same conceptually. But on the computer level, plain text has changed multiple times. If you know the absolute basics about computers, you'd know that everything is based around binary. So when you press, say, like the letter A on your keyboard, that letter A isn't actually being stored in memory as the symbol A. It's being stored as a sequence of binary symbols, but it's not always being stored as the same sequence. So one of the ways you can encode symbols is with a standard known as ASCII. Now ASCII works perfectly fine for English, but other languages out there have wildly different character sets. Take something like Japanese, where rather than just having an alphabet that has 52 symbols with the lowercase and uppercase symbols, you have hiragana, katakana, and kanji, where you have thousands upon thousands of symbols. So if you were to take US ASCII and then open it up with a program that only understands JIS, which is a character encoding system used in Japan, that document would likely be completely garbled. Now the standard is Unicode, which once again is encoded completely differently. But the advantage of Unicode is rather than just having one language as symbols, it has symbols from languages all across the world, even from some dead languages, as well as having things like emoji. Now, because there are so many symbols in Unicode, it is still being updated. So one version of Unicode isn't going to be the same thing as another version. So if you take a document from a hundred years in the future using Unicode, some of the symbols in that document won't actually be handled. And the last argument pertaining to the plain text is unlike something like Markdown or Org Mode, there is no way to have a marker that indicates that something is a title or a chapter heading, so it makes it really hard to search the document. This, however, is flat out wrong. So let's go and say the title, and I'm going to go and make this Heading 1. And you might notice under my navigator here, there's a marker. That's crazy. Let's go and make another one. 
let's go make this heading two. This one is actually nested under the first heading. Very easy. Yes, you're not searching in the same way as you would with more Unixy tools, but to say that you can't search is just wrong. Now, this is a fun one. Word processors are evil because DocX is proprietary. Now, that would be a great point, except that DocX isn't actually proprietary, it's actually an open standard known as Office Open XML. This also includes PPTX and the other file types used by the Microsoft Office suite that end in an X. Now, even though this is an open standard, the license does state it's not open to be modified. So, it's not completely open. That I guess you could call proprietary, but I think you're really pulling at straws there. But let's just pretend it actually is proprietary. LibreOffice uses a different standard known as Open Document. This is how you get things like the ODT files used by LibreOffice Writer. Open Document is completely open. DocX replaced the doc standard in Microsoft Office in 2007, and the doc standard used for 30 years prior actually was proprietary. If it's an open standard, why does LibreOffice sometimes have trouble rendering it? Well, it's a very big and very complex standard, and when you have something like that, bugs are going to crop up here and there. A weird argument he made was that word processes were created before FOSS existed by proprietary companies, and I guess he's trying to say that therefore future word processes must also be tainted by its origin, but he fully acknowledged that LibreOffice does exist and he actually uses LibreOffice, so I don't know what point he was trying to make here, but by this logic, Linux is also evil because it stems from the proprietary Unix. Calling things evil serves absolutely no purpose and doesn't mean anything unless you actually have reasoning behind it. The last argument I want to address is that everybody knows plain text is better and they know it's more efficient. And this could not be further from the truth. So I went through a software engineering degree where in university, writing research papers with LaTeX is basically just the standard. But I was probably one of a handful of people that even knew that LaTeX even existed. When we got to our final year and we're actually writing papers, nobody even knew that was a thing. Sure, they knew Markdown existed for writing things like GitHub issues, but they'd never consider writing an entire document like that, and this is with people that actually are well versed in computing. If you take this out of that space and just go to like a general office, nobody's gonna know at all that you can write an entire document in plain text and have it actually be rendered nicely. I think a lot of people in the Linux world live in this Linuxy sort of bubble where all the people they surround themselves with are these Linuxy sort of people and because all the people you're surrounded with do this, it seems like everybody else does as well. But once you step outside of that bubble, you realize that couldn't be further from the truth. Word processors make formatting a document incredibly easy. Sure, they take away a lot of your control and they take away a lot of the power you get from using Unix utilities like grep, sed, orc, things like that. But at the end of the day, if you're not really competent with computers, I can just click a button and that text turns bold. I can click a button and that image is now in the center of the screen and I don't really need to think about what's actually happening in the background. From a personal usage perspective, do whatever you want. But to say that word processes are evil just doesn't make any sense. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. That'll be everything for me, and before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Carl, Mitchell, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Peter, D, Stephen, Tease, through Tony, Shah, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, or all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, and I also upload YouTube shorts from those live streams, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That'll be everything for me, and I'm out.